One in five Americans approved of the British law and supported the revolution. Loyalists were persecuted by revolutionary patriots during the war. Their houses and farms were burned down. When the Treaty of Paris was signed, between 80,000 and 100,000 black loyalists were forced to leave the U.S. Some went to England, British colonies, and some formed in the colonies Quebec, Nova Scotia, and the island of St. John's. 75,000 went to Ontario, 2,000 went to Quebec, and 30,000 went to Cape Britain, St. John's. The British offered freedom to the slaves in the 13 colonies, hoping to ruin plantations and weaken the American rebels. An estimated 10,000 slaves crossed British lines and became soldiers, cooks, laborers, or nurses. Some were sold back into slavery once the war was over. The First Nations were in New York and were on good terms with the British. The First Nations felt like they needed to choose sides when the American Revolution began. Their leader, Joseph Brandt, disagreed. He visited England as an ambassador in 1775 and secured Quebec if the Mohawks fought for the British during the war. Brandt led the Mohawks and the Loyalist fighters against the rebels. When the British lost the war and the Treaty of Paris was signed in 1783, the Americans and the British North America was divided. These negotiations were without the First Nations. They felt betrayed. Brandt argued that the First Nations had been friends and supporters of the British for many years and deserved more in return. The British made an effort to build up English-speaking colonies because they wanted colonies loyal to the British crown. The Loyalists, including the First Nations and the African Americans, seem less likely to challenge the crown. The War of 1812 would eventually ensure that the British North America would not be part of the United States. The Canadians did not like the British rule. The Dominion of Canada would not be formed until 1867. The Loyalists made problems for the British government. The Constitutional Act divided Quebec into two parts. Upper Canada, which was ruled by the British, and Lower Canada, which was ruled by the French. Lower Canada kept French culture, law, and religion. Lower Canada is nowadays known as Quebec. Upper Canada was English-speaking, Protestant, and ruled by the British, and is now known as Ontario. The Constitutional Act gave both colonies their own governments, each consisting of an elected assembly.